Buena Vista Horace Mann has been a community school since its inception in 2012. From its inception, we had a community school coordinator, someone who helped procure resources and connect organizations you know, from the neighborhood, from the nonprofit sector, to staff and parents and students working here on site. So we established as a staff, um, in conjunction with our families, three goals um, that should guide all of the work that we do at BVHM. Every year we have an academic goal that identifies the student populations that we are pushing to make accelerated growth. The second goal is around social emotional learning, how we're supporting the social development of our students, building those core competencies around self-efficacy, self-esteem, self-management that we know are essential for academic growth. And then third, how are we engaging the families in this work? How are we communicating? How are we ensuring that we're responsive to the needs and assets that the families bring to our community. And each year those are established by our school, our, by our teaching staff, by our students and by our families. And that sets the intention and the direction of all of our work here. So we have a number of counselors and school social workers. We have a number of reading intervention teachers. We have a number of uh, classroom teacher coaches and other support staff, all in the service of making sure that the classroom feels safe, feel stable, that if any kind of needs arise, that there's an adult who is competent and trusted to address those needs. To ensure that we had authentic partnership with our families of students that needed the most support, we've had to be really strategic about how we engage families and how we set up shared decision making to hear the voices that often go unheard and our programming should respond to the needs of the families of the students that need it the most. We have learned a lot over the years on how to engage families and how to build authentic partnerships and how to build authentic decision-making structures. A lot of that stemmed from the development of our Stay Over program, which is a program that allows any SFUSD family who is unhoused to stay on campus at night in one of our gymnasiums and receive case management services to support their eventual housing. And that program surfaced a lot of these questions that you're asking. How do you make decisions with families? How do you ensure that you're hearing the voices? How do you build programming that's responsive to family needs? And so by having those hard conversations, and building programming that was responsive to the highest needs as defined by our families, um, we were able to disrupt that pattern and really bring leadership from monolingual Spanish-speaking families, families that had um, needs related to immigration, had needs related to basic needs, to housing, to mental health, to physical health. Um, and it shifted our programming and our focus and our intention, and it shifted our goals. It shifted our mission. It had, forced us to really articulate why are we here, who are we here to support, how are we going to be inclusive in that work so that we could really address the needs of the entire community with an emphasis on the families and students that needed it the most. When families feel like their voices are heard and empowered in the decision making at a school site for how to staff a school, uh, it really does change how their student can engage at the school site. So for instance, at a school where they felt like, perhaps the staff felt like they've needed uh, extra hands, perhaps a school nurse or another social worker or a new type of class, a dance class, garden class, um, even for some uh, targeted supply drops for families to take home to do intensive work after school. All of that uh, takes a lot of effort. And it also, when coming from families, um, becomes more authentic. And so in changing those uh, practices at a school site, the engagement from students and the opportunities to learn expand exponentially. And students feel like they belong. They feel like the school represents them, represents their family, represents their community, and therefore they are an active part of the school. We also invested in uh, additional special education staff because our data also showed us that our special ed students were not having the same success um, as, other, as other subgroups. So our data informed that and our programming shifted to support um, our, our students with IEPs in a different way, lower caseloads for our resource specialists, um, and add services in that we knew were, were critical to our SPED population. When I see our students who are struggling with so much than, more than they should as young people succeed, intellectually, creatively, when they serve their community, when they're kind to each other, 
when they're interacting with adults here on campus and beyond, it makes me incredibly proud because I know that we've been able to reduce whatever barriers were in their way and they were able to focus enough to not only learn the lessons but connect up to the values that are at the center of our work. I'm very proud of what we do for our community and I'm very grateful for all the ways that our community shows up for our school. One of the things that I think really makes us stand out as a community school is that we have a very symbiotic relationship with our neighborhood. So it's not a one-way service. We get just as much as we give to the mission. I think that the mission is proud of us too.